Apologies for the poor lighting. Um, I am recording under just my study lamp here um, and I don't want to turn on the main light but anyway I am reading currently um, these are two books actually um, the, by Samuel Johnson and James Boswell uh, they are 18th century um, English and Scottish writers um, and this specifically this these two texts here combined in one book um, called A Journey to the Western Islands of Scotland by James uh, Samuel Johnson and The Journal of a Tour to the Deb uh, Hebrides uh, by James Boswell. Um, so these are two texts and these talk, uh, talk about the um, Boswell's and Johnson's journey through Scotland, through Edinburgh um, and both of their texts, although they had taken the journey together, um, they, these two texts are uh, very different in their context and the way they have written. Um, of course, Boswell's is more of a journalistic um, kind of writing uh, and Johnson's is rather um, explanatory and more demographic or um, an informative piece of writing of um, about Scotland um, and I'm reading this because um, I am I will be traveling to Scotland in a few days myself um, I am going I'm going to be visiting Edinburgh and a few Scottish countrysides um, and I'm super excited about that uh, so that is why I'm reading this because um, it's part of a course uh, so I'm very excited to be traveling with my classmates and see Scotland I'm also excited to go to Scotland because this would be my first this would be my first time traveling um, abroad I've never gone to any other country um, I mean outside of the US um, so that is why I'm quite excited but also I'm embracing myself for the cold and the rain I checked the weather app and it's it is going to be quite rainy and um, cold and of course super windy um, I'm excited to explore the castles I'm excited to explore a few churches bookstores um, and whatever Edinburgh has to offer I still have to do some research myself to be honest um, except from I mean whatever uh, 18th century 19th century Scotland was I'm sure it's not <laughs> the same anymore um, but uh, of course we will be kind of tracing the journey of Samuel uh, Johnson and um, James Boswell in our trip um, so that would be exciting to see what they saw back in the 18th century and what we will see in the 21st century so in this class we are learning about travel literature travel writing uh, memoir writing and how these two sort of interconnect um, intersect um, so we are uh, kind of talking about especially um, the emergence of travel writing in the um, 18th century um, England um, and the emergence of the novel and um, how personal writing, how journal writing, how uh, memoirs um, uh, have come about in these uh, forms and in the 18th and 19th century England um, so in this class we talk about that a lot um, I'm particularly interested I have been actually particularly interested in um, travel writing because during my masters I worked on um, blogs and I studied uh, space I worked on a specific blogger um, actually her name is Siv Shivya Nath um, she is one of the top um, travelers um, travel bloggers uh, from India and I worked on her blogs I also uh, worked on her one book called the shooting star um, her blog is actually called the shooting star as well um, and during my masters I worked on her um, I studied her blogs uh, through the lens of space um, and the occupation of space by a female traveler specifically uh, and how um, the public and the private 
spaces are occupied by female travelers and how um, they're different uh, from um, as compared to as occupied by um, male travelers or men in general um, so I sort of did a comparative study uh, on her blogs um, studying space uh, and under the feminist lens so um, I have been intrigued by travel writing um, maybe I can work on that uh, contrasting yeah I was thinking about my um, end of semester project uh, I'm still brainstorming so maybe I can work um, something along that lines uh, comparing 18th century travel writing um, to 19th century travel writing to the 21st century um, travel writing how narratives have changed how um, how women are occupying public spaces now uh, of course if you research there there have been female travelers as well um, but mostly they have traveled um, accompanying husbands or uh, family members um, I mean I, there are women who have traveled for the sake of traveling uh, but very less in numbers and of, of course uh, we do not I, in my knowledge uh, we do not have many records of that um, specifically if we talk about um, Indian or South Asian uh, women there is not a lot of representation um, I'm sure there are uh, accounts of that it's just that I have not um, researched on that particular um, any particular era as such um, so yeah I would love to research on that maybe and I can uh, actually work on that yeah now that I'm thinking about it maybe I can google and dig up some um, female travelers from post-colonial from colonial India it 19th century 18th century India I think that would be an interesting research to do yeah but to be honest I have been thinking about travel lately of course everybody loves to travel we all want to travel um, the world but it is also it has to do it has also to do with a uh, lot uh, with class and uh, money uh, accessibility um, right now i am in the us and because i'm an indian citizen i to travel to the uk i do need a visa and that process was um, expensive to be honest but if you're let's say born in the U us you do not need um, visa for to travel to a lot of countries uh, so it makes your life way easier especially in terms of travel it makes it less expensive um, so i was thinking about travel in terms of that um, how travel is a privilege um, travel is an immense privilege that comes with um, class privilege and um, of course caste privilege gender privilege uh, to be honest there are a lot of um, things that as a women that I have to uh, keep in mind as while traveling um, I mean everybody should be conscious while traveling but um, there's another gendered perspective um, when a woman is traveling I would say or any minority gender um, so yeah I, I have been thinking about travel a lot um, there is another this another book <laughs> this is one of my favorite books and um, it's called um, alternative realities love in the lives of Muslim women um, yeah so although it talks about um, I mean the title says love in the lives of uh, Muslim women this author Nigat M Gandhi she um, she she has roots uh, in Bangladesh as well as in Pakistan she is uh, she's an Indian citizen but she has roots in uh, in the Indian subcontinent and in, in, in the in in the Indian subcontinent um, and in this book she traces um, she traces her origins she also talks to uh, in her journeys she talks to uh, Muslim women um, about their love lives um, and I found it so interesting this is a travel memoir um, this is uh, there's personal writing there's writing about travel and what she um, she she experiences in Pakistan uh, and also in in Bangladesh um, and her take on different uh, different women uh, women who have who live different lives uh, their stories about queer women their stories about um, devout religious women their stories about 
um, non-religious <laughs> women um, and different kinds of um, women that uh, that there is no particular there is no particular one box to define a woman um, and specifically because she talks to she traces her journey um, in these three countries talking to um, Muslim women specifically it's quite interesting to see her take on religion it's quite interesting to see her take on uh, heteronormativity um, sexuality um, uh, challenging the concepts of many women challenging the concepts of uh, concept of um, the family heteronormative family unit um, so yeah this is one of my favorite travel uh, memoirs actually um, so yeah since I have been thinking about travel a lot and I was uh, contemplating on uh, on travel uh, and the aspects that come along with it um, I mean it's very easy for me to actually just um, I mean it's I, I do feel that I am in a uh, privileged position in a lot of ways and I do acknowledge that specifically when it comes to um, travel um, and and um, although I do I mean um, yeah I, I feel I am stuttering and I apologize but um, my thoughts are kind of haywire right now but Travel is a is a privilege, and right now in this in in our society, when we are living in this like um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok society, uh, and how travel is portrayed there, uh, it's it's quite disturbing, I would say. Um, I was talking about Shivya Nath, the travel blogger that I uh, wrote my dissertation on, and um, so she is. She is uh, she's a promoter of sustainability, um, traveling sustainably. Uh, she she promotes um, environment friendly travel tips and such, and it makes me uh, wonder. It makes me um, think. She does talk about how we should travel slow, uh, which means that you know staying at a place for a longer period of time, um, using locally sourced products. Um, staying in homestays and uh, all these things but of course a normal uh, a, a nine to five uh, job um, going person it's not possible for most people um, the lifestyle that you go to Myanmar for three months uh, go to Thailand for four months uh, I don't think it's practical for most of us but um, I do agree with a lot of things that Shivana promotes and I guess um, what I'm trying to say is that travel travel is is a luxury and in this Instagram phase of our uh, of this of this millennial uh, of the 21st century it's um, also kind of I feel it puts a lot of pressure on people to travel um, because because people do feel especially uh, I think people from my generation feel this need to like travel it also has become a, um, a symbol of financial economic status uh, for a lot of people um, so yeah at the end I think it does boil down to to status to money to to class and uh, as much as we might not like to uh, accept that uh, but travel travel is a, a privilege i mean even in the 19th century not everybody could travel people did not just travel around and um, these guys were uh, privileged and they had a lot of um, money to do so they were they used to be kings who used to just go to uh, i mean european kings who used to go travel around and um, gather knowledge and experience life people <laughs> with money could do that um, and i think nothing much has changed even now um, and i mean not that <laughs> uh, people cannot travel but it's just that we should i feel acknowledge the role of money in in when we are traveling um, so for this course i am uh, i am funded by my university i have gotten a scholarship so hence i can <laughs> go for um, this trip to the uk to S scotland right now um, otherwise i don't think i would have been able to afford 
uh, a trip to Scotland <laughs> by myself with the PhD stipend that I get. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, all in the, all this rambling, I think I just I think I'm trying to like conceptualize my final project. I guess here um, I'm thinking about maybe I can do a comparative study and that would be um, very interesting. Uh, and I do want to look at these other things that come along uh, when one is traveling. Um, also another thing um, I I was kind of thinking about is um, traveling in a European country, traveling in the UK, um, specifically a white country, a predominantly white country. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to think uh, in the 21st century traveling as a woman as a traveling as a brown woman um, as compared to maybe traveling in the 18th century as a white man um, their experiences are quite different uh, I'm hoping they're they are different um, and I am interested to see that myself to be honest uh, I will figure that out I will I mean I will um, as I travel and so um, I cannot say uh, about anything about that right now but I am thinking about what how the experience of a 20 something year old brown woman in Scotland would be like in the 21st century um, as opposed to um, travel of a white middle-aged old man uh, in the 18th 19th century um, Englishman actually um, and so I think that would also be interesting to look at also I mean travel is not just restricted and constricted um, constricted to like traveling outside overseas um, traveling even within the country in whichever country you live in or like within the state within the district uh, are also kind of interesting and um, there are a lot of especially i mean talking about india it's super diverse uh, ranging from different cultures to different food to different languages um, it's a study in itself um, i feel um, especially especially in northeast india um, in assam it's so diverse and so beautiful uh, geographically it's diverse culturally um, especially i think in the future i would love to explore uh, the food across um, uh, Assamese states and um, culturally specifically in diverse communities I, I'm very much intrigued by food in my travels I would say um, even for the Scotland trip I am excited to explore the Scottish food the Scottish drinks um, so yeah that's I think one a big plus point about traveling is that getting to not just know local people um, but also to experience their their food um, yeah so I am quite excited about the food